with you. Thank you. Okay, before the vice president joins us, I want to bring out a local Michigander. I love saying Michigander <laughs> around here. She's known as Big Gretch. Please welcome Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We're so happy to be in your state. Thank you, I'm glad you're here. Yes, and we want everybody who can vote, obviously, to vote, but it's very important for women. So what do you want to say to women? Well, this is gonna be a big, close race. Michigan yes. is always tight. We know we're feeling good, but we gotta translate that feeling into action. We deserve a leader who is strong and kind. It's not oh, mutually exclusive. And that's so why good. I think this moment is so important for all of us today, but for our kids and future generations too. There's so much at stake here from our individual reproductive freedom to the ability to get ahead and make a good living and take care of your family. That's all on the line this election. Yes, strong and kind. Yes. Isn't that a notion? <laughs> and what can Michigan do to help get Kamala Harris to the White House? I think we've got to do the hard work. In 2016, we were short 11,000 votes. That's two votes per precinct, which tells you that a conversation you have with a loved one or a neighbor or a fellow parishioner, whomever in your life you can talk to, we've got to do it. Do something, as Michelle Obama said at yes. the convention. Well, this is what we're doing tonight. We're doing something. Thank you for allowing us Thank in your you. state. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a seat there. Thank you. Right there. I want to bring in right now, I want to bring in right now the chair of the Harris Waltz campaign, Jen O'Malley Dillon. Jen, Jen, hello. Hi. Have you seen anything like this? Isn't no. this great fun? It's Tell amazing. Tell us what needs to happen uh, from this day until November 5th. So first of all, this campaign is so inspired by the grassroots organizations that have come together like this, and it is making us stronger as a campaign to work together. We wouldn't be here without them today. We have 47 days left, and you all know the stakes or you wouldn't be here. And while we have this extraordinary growing enthusiasm that the Vice President and Governor Walz are seeing everywhere, we are still in a margin of error race. It's tied. It's tied right here in Michigan. It's tied in all the battleground states. So it's gonna take all of us to build a pathway, many pathways to 270 electoral votes. That's what we're focused on the campaign. In every state, we have to register more people. We have to mobilize our voters to turn out to vote. And then we have got to go persuade those people that still don't know enough about the vice president and her vision for the future. And if we do that together, all of us, we're going to get over the top, but it's really going to take all of us. And to make sure that you're working in your own lives, have those hard conversations in big and small ways. We're going to inch our way over the finish line because we're going to be able to do it together. And don't you need money? Well, we do. <laughs> we do. And, and these groups need money, too. All of us do because the work is happening on the ground and in the communities. So if you want to help in any way at all in the campaign, go to go.comlaharris.com. But if you want to help and not be formally engaged with us and, and join any of these groups here, that's what we need too. It's going to take all of us. Yes, and I think that everybody on the screens, everybody in this room, everybody who's listening, you become your own grassroots organization when we leave this moment that we're sharing here tonight, and you do what you can in your community. It's not enough just to join us all. We love having you here, but the rah-rah moment is going to end, and then we need to get to work. We need to get busy. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I have to say, I have to just say this, that the social media team for the Harris campaign has been killing it. They have been killing it. I think, it, I think that team helped spark this people-led movement. And here's a short look at the rallying cry across social media. I'm watching the Kamala Harris um, rally right now, and wow, I'm like crying. So Tony and I just got done knocking 48 doors in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Majority, if not all, independent Republican libertarian doors. Republicans for Harris is growing explosively too. We just need to get back to a place in this country where we can have disagreements and have them still be respectful. I'm here with Richard, a 77-year-old registered Republican. 
who's going to be voting for Kamala Harris. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Obviously, a narcissist just doesn't stand for anything that I stand for. What issues are most important to you personally? Uh, first of all, not electing a felon to the White House. I'm voting Harris Walls and a blue ticket all the way. In 2020, only 50% of young eligible voters actually showed up. And that was record breaking. So if you really want to be brat, you better be showing up in droves in November. We are with her. Yeah, okay. right. Right. And she's with us. I voted for Nikki Haley in the primary. I'm going to be voting for Kamala Harris. That's the right choice for America in 2024. Let me tell you, it is about character, and it's about decency and respect, and all the things that we were raised to believe about what it means to be an American citizen and pursue the American dream. And if that is important to you, I hope, whether you are a Democrat or a Republican or somewhere in the middle, you will choose to vote your values because values are on the line in this election. And in no other country on this earth could her story unfold the way it has. From a child of immigrants to big sister to McDonald's worker, there is hope for y'all. <laughs> District attorney, a wife and mamala to senator to vice president Please welcome Kamala Harris! So welcome Oprah. to Oprah. Hello, <laughs> Madam Vice President. Hello, welcome to Michigan. It's so good to be back. And Governor, thank you for everything you are and everything you do for the state. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can you see this? We have a thousand oh screens goodness. here oh representing goodness. people from all over the country. Hi, everyone. Can you oh feel? My goodness. Can you yes. feel? Can you feel it? Can you feel can. the joy rising in here? I can, and I, I have to tell you, there's so much that I love about our campaign because it really is about the people. And I look around at these screens, Oprah, I look at who's in the room, and this is America. This is. This is America. You know, I was saying with a group of friends earlier, I think in this moment where we've dealt with so much that I think is quite exhausting around powerful forces that would try and divide us and yes. try us to have us as Americans pointing fingers at each other. Yes. That this movement that is about reminding each other that we have so much more in common than what separates us is so critically important. And this is about the strength of who we are as Americans. And this movement that we're in about, as I like to say, seeing in the face of a stranger a neighbor. Yes, 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 right? yes, yes. An extension of love thy neighbor, that you literally in the face of a stranger see a neighbor. Yes. And approach each other with that level of dignity and grace and and kindness. Well, that's exactly what yeah. happened with the win with black women. I know yeah. you've known Joe Taylor for many that. years. Thank you, well, my that's dear. That's exactly oh. what happened. She started it. Is that they <laughs> had they to be started called. it. They had to be it's called. your fault. <laughs> they had to be called and then said, let's open the door. Yeah. Let's open the door and invite everybody else in. And everybody actually came. Organically. Yes. Organically. Like, yeah. this is the beauty of our country. I, you know, there's so much at stake in this election. And ultimately, the question before us is what kind of country do we want to live in? And the beauty of a democracy, as long as we can hold on to it, 
The beauty of a democracy is each of us has the power. Each right. of us has That's the right. power That's right. to answer that question. That's right. Everybody right? on this call and beyond has the power. But can yeah. I just start with this? Yes, please. I have to say this because in all of my private conversations, Gail, and I've said this a hundred yeah. times, every, and everybody is saying it, you all have said it, I know you have. It seems to us that something happened to you mm. the moment uh, Joe Biden, President Biden, stepped aside and withdrew his candidacy, mm -hmm that a veil or something dropped and you just stepped into your power? I mean, literally, looking at you at a speech like the week before, which was a great speech, very nice, and then the next week I saw you walking in the thing. What happened to you? You know, we each have those moments in our lives where it's time to step up. Time to step up. Time to step up, you know? Well, the moment you heard, I mean, I really have been saying to people it felt like a veil dropped and you sort of stepped through that veil. Did, did that actually, did you feel like that? I felt a sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and with that comes a sense of purpose. But I mean, we're all here and you all are taking time out of your busy lives, everyone here, everyone on the screen, because there really is so much at stake. Uh, you know, I have spent the majority of my career being concerned about the well-being of other people. Yeah. Um, as I've said, in my career as a prosecutor, I never looked at a, a victim or a witness and ask them, are you a Republican or a Democrat? The only thing I ever asked them is, are you okay? Are you okay? I know when I heard that. You know? Touch me. And traveling this country and knowing what is at stake in terms of fundamental freedoms, what's at stake in terms of fighting against hate and those, those efforts to divide us. Mm -hmm. And I do know that I'm in a position to do something about it. So I felt a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the incredible power of the people, right, who, you know, I'm not the only leader in this. We're all leaders in this. This is so much bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It's about who we are as Americans. And it's about making clear what we stand for. And what we stand for is, it is about the ideals upon which we were founded, including the importance of freedom and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the importance of independence and, and the importance of dignity. And, and purpose, but it is also about what we stand for in terms of our values. I, I think of it yeah, this way. I think way. a lot boils down to values. I just said really values does. are on the line here. Yes. It does. I mean, think about it, Oprah. The idea that some would suggest and that my opponent and it suggests, which is that the measure of the strength of a leader based on who you beat down. Come on. The real measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. And it's, it, it's important for us. Absolutely. To articulate you know, that. You know, ever since the debate, we feel for our fellow citizens in Springfield. Do you not think yeah. about the fellow citizens in Springfield, Ohio, the Haitian families, the, the, the non-Haitian families, everybody having to deal with this lie that has endangered the lives of Haitian people and anybody who looks Haitian. Everybody in America feels for that. And I also everybody in America, left, right, middle, has concerns about immigration. Yeah. And I'm told that Justin, Justin, where are you in the audience? Justin, hello, in our audience. Hello, Madam Vice President. Uh, you live in Michigan. Yes, ma'am. Don't stop saying hello, Madam Vice President. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> what's, your, what's your question? It's an immigration question. question for you is, uh, um, when you become president, what would be your uh, specific your steps? Help. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> what would be specific steps to strengthening the border? So it's a wonderful and important question. Um, I, you know my background was as a prosecutor and I was also the elected attorney general for two terms of a border state. So this is not a theoretical um, issue for me. This is something I've actually worked on. Okay. I have prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. I take very seriously the importance of having a secure border and ensuring the safety 
of the American people. Uh, sadly, 